Talking Game Day Sports Radio, Bojo Wood, with you on Thanksgiving morning, bringing in Mike Benoit from OTM Sports out in Las Vegas. Mike, how are you? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Coach. Got a big week planned? Oh, yeah, of course, always. Uh, you know, you know got to cook and feed everybody that wants to be fed. You know the routine. You deal with yep. it. Yeah. Sure do. Yeah, but uh, but last hey, week of college football. Yeah, last regular season week of college football. It just seems like uh, just like yesterday we were talking about LSU and, and Florida State kicking things off, and and now we're we're winding things down, trying to uh, uh, put things up in a nice little ball for the for Christmas and the college football playoffs. And it looks like some people are going to be pleasantly surprised by Santa, but man, there's going to be some coal in some stockings. Oh, no doubt about it. Uh, I assume we're going to talk about that uh, after we talk about the Friday game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk. Uh, yeah, I'll I tell you what. I want to talk some about the college football playoffs and the Heisman uh, race with you. Uh, let's get the games out of the way, and then we'll talk about that. Uh, we're going to start yeah. things off with tomorrow night, Friday night, the number 16 Oregon State at number six, Oregon. That's going to be an 8.30 p.m. prime time on Fox. Uh, now the whole nation is going to be able to – all eyes are going to be on Oregon and, and Bo Nix into this game. Uh, you know, obviously he's one of the top favorites for the Heisman over 3,500 yards passing, 35 touchdowns, only two interceptions. And, uh, and like I said, we'll talk Heisman at the end of this segment. But Oregon wins, and, and they're in the Pac-12 championship game. But Oregon State, they can't be overlooked. You look at their three losses, Washington State stands out early, but uh, they got three losses by a total of uh, just eight points. They only lost by two to Washington last week, and then uh, they lost to Arizona on the road, uh, to who's a very good football team, as, as we're finding out. And then, of course, that loss to Washington State. The Ducks, they're heavy, uh, heavy favorites at home. Yeah, they're favored by anywhere from 13 to 14. If you want to play Oregon, play them now because the public's going to be – this week, Thanksgiving week, uh, people come out of the woodwork and not less seasoned betters. Like, for instance, um, today on Thanksgiving and Friday and Saturday, they're going to be betting all the favorites, so those numbers are going to be inflated. Mm -hmm. um, if Oregon wins out, they have a good shot to get in the playoff. Uh, yeah. I think they do win – tonight and i think they beat washington in a rematch next uh, friday night let's go saturday the saturday games this is the big game this is the one i'm waiting for number two ohio state at number three michigan that's going to be the big noon kickoff on fox uh what a soap opera that we're dealing with right now i mean you've got an analyst who's a former marine orchestrates an elaborate covert operation of sign stealing for your, of your opponents Harbaugh started the season suspended. He came back, but now he's suspended again. Assistant coaches are resigning, being fired. Ryan brothers, uh, Ryan Day's brothers may be the catalyst for all of this uh, with their private investigation uh, firm. Uh, they may or may not have been the ones who truly exposed this story. I'll tell you, like, this surpasses something that happened, you know, uh, almost 40 years ago. Bill Curry claimed that Alabama players were receiving death threats uh, before the 1989 Iron Bowl, the first one that was ever played in Auburn. But uh, the reason this surpasses that is because this is actually true. We know this to be true. And uh, But drama aside, this should be another Buckeye Wolverine classic game. Michigan favored by three in the big house. Yeah, three. You can still find some three and a halfs out there at different casinos if you like Ohio State. Coach, it's a very low total. It's 46 and a half. Now, the last 12 times these teams played, all 12 of those scored more than 46 points. So I would lean a little bit to the over, but the two defenses are really solid. Um, look, Harbaugh is not going to be on the sideline, and that can matter in this game. I um, mean, this is not, you know, this is not the bottom feeders of the Big Ten. This is Ohio State. And Michigan will not be able to run 30 straight running plays like they did against Penn State. So 
Uh, I don't have a position at this point, but at three, I kind of lean to Michigan, but uh, I don't have a play on it as of now. Yeah, Harbaugh about being on the sideline, I think that, again, it's not necessarily him, Harbaugh calling any particular defense or any particular offensive play. It's just the management, his management of the game and his his ability to influence the officials. And I'm not talking about, you know, in a, in, in the old Bo Schembechler way of, of throwing clipboards and Buddy uh, Woody Hayes' old way of breaking yard markers, but – Harbo does a great job of interacting with the officials, and he works them all day just like a good basketball coach would. And, and I think that and the time management aspect, the game management aspect that he brings to the table, I think that's what Michigan can miss. He, he's the best that there is, okay? I mean, go back to when he was at San Francisco. I mean, say what you will about his personality and trips to other countries. I don't care about that. Okay, as far as in game, even remember when Michigan State blocked the punt. It, well, he had he had ran the uh, clock perfectly because if you go back and watch, if the guy gets tackled at the one instead of falls into the end zone, the game's over because he had run the whole clock out. Right now, you go back to when he was at the Niners. The San Fran was. Uh, in a situation where they had achieved a safety, he declined it because he knew he could take a knee. Right. I'll bet you there's not another coach in the league that would have thought to do that. Yeah. And it affected the point spread, of course. But, no, as far as his game management, he is second to none. Yeah. Uh, speaking, I brought up the tide in that last segment there. Speaking of them, number eight Alabama going to unranked six and five Auburn, the Iron Bowl, 3.30 Eastern kick on CBS, a lot a lot of uh, not really drama, but just a, a, a lot of uh, outside things uh, that bring your attention to this game. The, the one from a broadcasting standpoint, uh, SEC, particularly Alabama fans, have railed against Gary Danielson for 30 years now since CBS has been doing the SEC games. Well, this is the last time they'll have to listen to Gary because this is the last – regular season SEC CBS game until uh, ABC and ESPN uh, until that deal begins. Uh, you know, Alabama still has hopes for winning out and making the college football playoffs. Tigers, they're still licking their wounds from that 31 to 10 beat down New Mexico state gave them last week uh, on the very field. They're going to be playing on Saturday, but crazy things have happened in this game, no matter where it's played. But it's going to take a lot of crazy for Auburn on Saturday because Alabama, you look, they're better in every tangible aspect of the game. The Tide, no, you know, no surprise here. They're favored over two touchdowns in Jordan there. I was very surprised uh, that Auburn was a no-show last week. It yeah. was a classic look-ahead spot. But when you're favored by nearly four touchdowns and you lose – outright it was very surprising mm -hmm. i was well we'll get to that in a moment but you look at the recent history of this series the last six times the game was played in auburn the tigers have won three they're three and three they've covered five of those six uh, in 2021 auburn absolutely shut down bryce young which no one else had done all year uh, they lost in four overtimes in that game and that was a greatly outmatched auburn team so in five of the six games in in Jordan Hare, Alabama uh, Auburn rather beat Alabama up front. You could argue that all six meetings, but definitely five of the six meetings, the Tigers won the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. The you know Auburn's in a situation where again they're embarrassed in a lot of different ways this week. Number one you lose to someone that you're, again, you're a four-touchdown favorite over, a team that's never beaten an SEC team. They come in to your place and play like they own it. Uh, and then you turn around and your former head coach takes a shot at you on Instagram. And uh, so, you know, Brian Harson still collecting those checks from Auburn, so I guess he's paying attention to what's going on down there. But uh, listen, let's chat for just a minute before you need to go about the college football playoffs. All right, hold uh, on. And, one yeah. last thing on, on the Alabama-Auburn game. Sure. Um, 
I'll just bring this up. Okay. And sometimes to a fault, I'll bring up history too much. Um, Alabama is going for their fourth straight win over Auburn in this series. Mm-hmm. And now while Auburn's beaten Alabama more than uh, three times, right. more than once in the, since 1981, 1981 is the last time Alabama did it. And Bear right. Bryant, that was his last regular season win. So again, it's, it's a little, it's, I wouldn't call it trivial, but mm-hmm. most people would not know that. And so that's a, you know, it's a tough spot for Alabama. I bet Auburn plus 15, you can still find 15s. Mm-hmm. I don't okay. think on game day you'll find 15s. Mm-hmm. I, I thought Saban had an interesting quote. He said, you know, lots of things happen in this game and you take away all the crazy stuff. He said, but by and large, since I've been here, the team that has played the best has won the game. I thought that was a very telling statement on his half. Yeah, because even though even those years that Auburn won and they were the underdog, mm-hmm. uh, twenty seventeen they were the better team, right? Right, right. and you know, even uh, twenty thirteen you could argue the same. So, right. yeah, it's uh, but they're not the better team this year, but right. the history is on their side, and they mm-hmm. beat Alabama at the line of scrimmage almost every time when they're playing them at home. Speaking of Alabama getting to getting into the playoffs, it's doable, but they're going to need some help. And, and of course, getting by the Bulldogs of Georgia and Atlanta is not going to be a given by any means. But, you know, question, if Texas and Bama, they end up as conference champions, they both have one loss, I mean, how do you disregard the head-to-head matchup? Because the College Football Playoff Committee has always said, is this is what we're going to give credence to. Number one, championships won. Well, you know, the SEC championship, Big 12 championship. Now, are we saying that the SEC just means more if you win that championship? Uh, strength of schedule, it depends on which methodology that you look at and use. Some have Alabama with a higher strength of schedule. Some have Texas. Uh, head-to-head competition, there's no doubt here. Texas, 34. Alabama, 24. The Longhorns took a knee multiple times in Brian Denny Stadium back in September. Now, when's the last time you remember that happening, okay? And uh, and then the College Football Playoff Committee says, then we'll look at comparative outcomes of common opponents, which there is none. So I think you go to the head-to-head matchup there. And if Alabama wins out and Texas wins out, I don't see how you put Texas or you put Alabama in over Texas. Well, here's the thing. In Alabama and Texas might not even be in the mix. Coach, mm-hmm. this is the most uncertainty I've seen in with week, one week left of the – this is the 10th year. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, th- you know what's going to happen. Next year, there's going to be like two good teams and a bunch of crappy ones. Well, this year you've got <laughs> yeah. eight to ten solid teams, but we yeah. only have four spots, right? Yeah. right? So, I mean, look, I'll say this. All right, Florida State – they can win out. I don't think they're getting in. Now, yeah. I have – because, I mean, it's not about fair and deserving. It's like they're going to – they're not one of the top four teams without their starting quarterback mm-hmm. who was fantastic. Right. Okay, you can't lose that kid. And then, you know, I'm sure, I don't blame them for arguing for a spot, but they, they're not getting in. Even no. if they – I don't think they're going to pull a Ohio State 2014 and – when they beat, remember they beat Wisconsin fifty nine to nothing and right. forced the committee's hand. Yeah, and uh, and that same year, that's that was at the expense of TCU and Baylor, mm-hmm. right? Yes, yes. And um, so, look, the first nine college football playoffs, the champions, Alabama has three, Clemson has two, Georgia has two, LSU one, Ohio State won the very first year. So all those teams, they have a blueprint, they're built, they have a culture. I don't know why, okay, because normally I'm always saying it's the same teams, and it is. I just pointed it out. But this year has a feel that maybe the champion this year is going to be a first-timer. Yeah, I I can totally see that happening. I totally see that happening. Let's move on to the Heisman. Uh, win for the Ducks is going uh, to be a rematch with UW in the Pac-12 championship game. That's going to be the 1st of December in Vegas. Now, and I'm, I'm kind of assuming that these two are going to take care of business. 
you know, Ducks win, Huskies going to take care of business in the Apple Cup. Now, I think Washington and Oregon at that point, I think they're playing for a spot in the college football playoffs. And I think the winner of that game, I think the quarterback that plays the best in that game, I think they're the Heisman winner because, you know, I know that voters like to cast their Heisman uh, ballots very early, but I think they'll wait this year. They're not due until the Monday after the game. And I know that Jalen Daniels right now is considered the the favorite, and, I, and he's a great athlete. Uh, he's a great quarterback, great leader, very tough kid. Uh, he has numbers, but I they're padded against weaker teams. You go back and you look at the good defenses that he's played and the production, it just isn't fair. Even when he was knocked out of the Alabama game, his numbers are not strong. Again, look at Florida State stats. Look at Alabama State. Uh, Alabama stats from uh, from that game, and I mean, I'm just saying, you know, I, I you know, I think it's got to be either Bo Nix or Michael Penix. Yeah, and right now, uh, at at BetMGM, I looked at my account. Bo uh, Bo is getting plus one ten, mm-hmm. and Shaden Daniels is plus one forty. Penix is five to one. So if you're going to make any bet there, I can't bet. I can't bet Jaden Daniels. Coach, when no. – um, this is not rhetorical. When is the last time the trophy, which you know I have issues with, but sure. when is the last time the trophy w- went to a, te- a player on a team with three losses? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, can't – yeah, I can't – I can't remember one. I mean, do you have to go back to the Paul Horning I mean, five and I, six? I was, nope. was going to say, you know, he's the – He's the only player that won the Heisman, uh, and his team had a losing record. Uh, and but yeah, I mean, I I can't. Maybe, maybe Doug Flutie, maybe Doug Flutie's team. I, I'm look, yeah. I don't know. Maybe somebody will write in and tell us how yeah. dumb we are for not yeah, knowing exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. But um, yeah. It, it's, let's put it this way: it's been a, you know, if it's, I'll say this: if it's been three losses, it's been three losses after the bowl game, not during the regular season. I'll, I I will I can confidently say that. Yeah. So here's the thing, uh, and he's putting up numbers, and they're going to try to to get him numbers as they should mm-hmm. right. against Texas A and M. But uh, the, to me, the only bet right now is is Penix because right. you don't want to bet Bo plus one ten. That's that's basically even money. Mm-hmm. But if you can get Penix at five to one at some of the square books, like mm-hmm. I found today. That's the only thing worth betting. And, uh, you know, normally if when I make Heisman bets, it's preseason and it's 50 to one. And it's mm-hmm. ironically, I had a bet on Daniels at 60 to one when he was at Arizona State a couple <laughs> of years ago. <laughs> kind of wish you had that now, right? Yeah, I'd love to have that number. All right. Well, Mike, we appreciate you as always coming in with us uh, again on this uh, early edition, Thanksgiving edition of Inside the Numbers. And uh, we'll talk to you again on Monday. But you have a great Thanksgiving. Eat a lot of turkey and stay safe. Same to you, Coach. Have a great week. All right. On OTM Sports out of Las Vegas, we'll be right back. GameBigSportsRadio.com.